Hello, my name is Dr. Eric Hollander, and I'm director of the Spectrum Neuroscience Research Foundation, and I'm also a clinical professor of psychiatry and behavioral sciences at the Albert Einstein College of Medicine, and director of the Anxiety and Depression Program at the Montefiore Medical Center, which is the University Hospital of Albert Einstein College of Medicine. I'm very uh, fortunate to be here today with uh, Mary Jo Cody. So Mary Jo Cody is a, is a well-known mental health advocate who's uh, spoken and written extensively about issues like postpartum depression, and she's the former first lady uh, of the governor of the state of New Jersey, mm -hmm. uh, Richard Cody. Mm -hmm. and, and so in that capacity, he's had a, a, a big impact in terms of uh, issues around screening for postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're going to be talking a little bit about postpartum depression. And what's interesting is that there's been an uh, advisory group that recently uh, published in the Journal of the American uh, Medical Association, or the JAMA Journal, uh, that issued uh, new uh, guidelines with regards to screening for postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was widely reported on the New York Times and other uh, outlets, for example. Mm -hmm. And then looking through this, you know, one of the fascinating things is that the, the state of New Jersey has already uh, instituted these kind of recommendations, mm -hmm. uh, really at your, at your behest. And so I wanted to talk with you a little bit about this uh, issue. So. Mm -hmm. Mary Jo, go ahead. Uh, so let's talk. Well, okay. New Jersey is far ahead of all the other states because when I had my son 30 years ago, mm -hmm. I had no idea that postpartum depression existed. The fact that anyone could be down after having a baby that they wanted as badly as I did was amazing to me. And then uh -huh. I, when I woke up in labor, I was happy because I knew in 24 hours I'd be holding my son or daughter. We didn't right. know back then. Uh -huh. And when he was born, after labor, I didn't want to hold him. And the nurse said, you want to hold him? And I really didn't. Uh -huh. And that was the beginning. That was the first red flag that within the months to come, the depression would grow deep and mm -hmm. severe. And by January, my husband was out giving a speech. And I had a scary thought about the microwave. I'd been having terribly intrusive thoughts mm -hmm. that I couldn't, I just, they were devastating to me. And I closed the microwave door, and I said, well, my husband comes home, I'm going away for the rest of my life. I'm, I'm going to call my psychiatrist uh -huh. and tell her to put me away. I didn't know anything about psychiatric hospitals. I'm not a healthcare worker. Right. I'm a kindergarten teacher. I knew nothing, had no experience at all with this, and it was never talked about. So when my husband came home, I said, Monday morning, um, I took really good care of my baby, because uh -huh. I knew from child growth and development courses that I had in my graduate degree, uh -huh. that you have to take care of them because they don't wait. Babies uh -huh. don't wait. So I said I took very good care of him from my head, not my heart, because I right. couldn't feel for him. Uh -huh. I said, you take this baby. I said, and keep him whole, because I'm going to a hospital and I can't come home, and I can't be a mother. Mm -hmm. And he, he cried all the way to the hospital, but I was numb. And I worried the whole time. I'm like, he's going to get over me. But I worried what kind of mom he was going to uh -huh. get for the baby. Yeah. Now, a couple of things that you said really sort of struck a chord with me. So first, uh, this happened 30 years ago, mm -hmm. right? So there's been, a, I guess, a lot in the media mm -hmm. more recently, but 30 years ago, I guess, there was really uh, very little discussed in public, right? Nothing. Yeah. And then Commercials the, with happy moms <laughs> playing with their new babies. Right, and that, I guess is. that's the irony. So you have mm -hmm. a beautiful baby. Mm -hmm. Everybody's telling you, well, this is, a, this is a great thing. You should be feeling great. But I never told anyone I wasn't feeling great. Uh -huh. I was uh -huh. too ashamed. I was right. so ashamed of how I felt that I didn't tell my mother or my sisters. Just my husband. And I would say, I'm, I'm depressed. And he'd say, what, what's wrong? We have, we have this baby. What's wrong? Uh -huh. And so I'm having scary thoughts. Right. And they, come to, they would come to me 10, 15 times a day. You know, like, what if you smother him? What if you drown him? And, right. and I said, I can't do it anymore. Three months of this, I can't. And, and right. he, he just said, you're a wonderful mother. I said, I know I am, because I know how to act like a mother, but I don't feel uh -huh. it. Right. But nobody knew. I didn't tell anybody. So it sounds like these things were really uh, intense and mm -hmm. uh, horrific. Intense. Heart. So they were uh, thoughts or images mm -hmm. of uh, images, alarming thoughts. your baby? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. 
right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so those were not thoughts that you wanted to have, uh, mm -hmm. right? Mm -mm. They weren't how you saw yourself, mm -mm. Uh -huh. and that you were having a hard time getting rid of the thoughts, right? I couldn't, I couldn't dismiss them, and I, I felt mm -hmm. a deep chain that I couldn't dismiss them, and I kept thinking, there has to be a personal weakness that I wasn't aware of, uh -huh. that I must have had. I couldn't figure it out. And then when I got to the hospital, the psychiatric hospital, uh -huh. they couldn't figure it out because they put me in with drug addicts and, and um, alcoholics. Uh -huh. And that was our support group. And they would look at me and say, what are you doing here? And it's like, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm doing here. I don't know why I'm here. They didn't know what to do with me because nobody ever talked about it. Right. So how do you think uh, things have changed over the last 30 years? Or what do you, what do you think in terms of... Uh, people's understanding about these issues and how people are treated these days. I think and, and what hasn't changed? Well, um, I think the stigma is a lot less now, uh -huh. at least in New Jersey, because uh -huh. moms know when they get into the hospital to have a baby through the Melanie Blocker Stokes Mothers Act that we got passed because my husband was the governor. Right. Um, that it could happen to you. Governor Richard Cody, mm -hmm. who was the governor of New Jersey. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. They know, they get literature when they come into the hospital that said, if you experience these thoughts, so right away it depersonalizes it. Uh -huh. So the mom knows it's not just her. Like I kept searching for me, what did I do? What's wrong with me? Well, they see uh -huh. it can happen. And when it happens, these are the signs to look for. And that's uh -huh. when you speak up when you're down, which was our our motto, speak up uh -huh. when you're down. Uh -huh. the, the horrible part about it is there's not enough places to go. We identify the moms and they call the health care line, but is there places for all these women to go to now that they're asking for help? Right. Not really. Well, it does seem like that's a big issue now with these mm -hmm. recommendations mm -hmm. with regards to screening. So let's say uh, OBGYNs mm -hmm. or uh, screening moms uh, mm -hmm. during pregnancy or shortly after giving birth to, to see whether or not individuals are having symptoms of depression like mm -hmm. problems with sleeping or right. eating mm -hmm. or feelings of hopelessness or suicidal thinking, for example, or horrific thoughts or images of harming the baby. Suicidal thoughts, by the way, uh -huh. were calming to me uh -huh. because I knew that I could kill myself so I don't have to hurt the baby. Uh -huh. So they, And that's right. how horrible this, this postpartum depression is. Right. It doesn't mean you need a babysitter. Right. That's why I had to get graphic with what happened to me. Yeah. Because people would say, oh, well, she needs a babysitter and let mom take care of the baby. You go out to have dinner with your husband and uh -huh. the, go, the depression will go away. No, I'm, uh -huh. I'm thinking terrible thoughts. Right. And it's 15 times a day. Right. Day and night. Now, th now that's something that I also found interesting about some of these recommendations or discussions is that there's a, a discussion of uh, obsessive compulsive mm -hmm. kind of symptoms along mm -hmm. with these uh, depressive kind of symptoms or mood unstable type symptoms mm -hmm. uh, and and in fact one type of obsessive thought or these are you know aggressive obsessions so there are mm -hmm. intrusive disturbing images or impulses that feel real or thoughts they right feel real they uh -huh. feel like any minute you're gonna do it right but they're horrific because oh. of, but you don't want to do that but uh, no. yeah right mm -mm. uh-huh so you raise the issue of uh, screening, right? So let's say uh, an OBGYN picks up these symptoms, or a family mm -hmm. family practice doctor, for example, in a in a women's clinic, picks up these symptoms, or mm -hmm. or, or a nurse screens for these, or a, mm -hmm. a social worker screens for these kind mm -hmm. of symptoms. Then what? Then we have a problem. <laughs> okay. Because we just don't have enough people that know what to do about it. Right. To, to be perfectly honest with you, your OBGYN doesn't want to know right because they're not interested in that end and your pediatrician he doesn't want to know he has baby after baby after baby to see right. in his office nobody wants to deal with the time it takes right and the money for a mental health disorder especially in women sorry to say right. that but women like sex, mental health and women uh -huh. we're on the back burner that's why I had right. to talk yeah that's why I had to get specific but well, you, you are right so that uh, Primary care doctors or OBGYNs are under a lot of time pressure, they right? And it's and not interesting to them. They're uh, not psychiatrists. So That's they may not, not be uh, right. trained. They may not 
Right. Be clear in terms of how you treat these problems. Exactly. Uh, and uh -huh. they're scared. Or who they're you afraid. refer uh, people right. to as well, right? Right. right. Uh -huh. And young families starting out, many of them don't have the money to put up front for a psychiatrist. Right. They just, they're, they're not expecting postpartum depression. Right. So they probably don't have it in their budget. Right. It, it better get there because there's no place to go. Yeah. Now I do see that um, of all of the medical problems in the world, so uh, problems associated with depression, for example, are the number three most costly type of disability after heart disease and cancer. Mm -hmm. So that there are big uh, financial costs and there mm -hmm. are clearly big costs to families dealing with these kind mm -hmm. of issues as well. Families okay. that are really basically starting out Right, and I, I think that that's a that's a great point. Is that young families uh, mm -hmm. may not have the financial resources. Uh, mm -hmm. Some people may be in uh, jobs where they may not be uh, covered with insurance, right, for right. example. I was they, lucky. Yeah. My husband yeah. was a senator, uh -huh. and we had the funds so that I could get help. Right. I I mean I couldn't afford to go to a great psychiatric. You know, some uh -huh. of these are really nice, but you know, <laughs> I went to a low cost. That's all uh -huh. we could afford. Okay. But. So, okay. let, so let me ask you, so for the, the symptoms that you've had for uh, depression, for example, or these intrusive kind of thoughts, what type of uh, treatments have you found to be helpful? Um, my medication. Uh -huh. um, my psychiatrist tried me on nine different medications and none uh -huh. of them worked. Uh -huh. And then she said to me, I decided I was going to take my life. I was, it was the summer. Uh -huh. and. Um, I was playing with the baby behind my legs in the pool, and I got an intrusive thought to drown him. It was like, drown him now, no one will know till it's too late. So then I said, you know something? I'm done. Mm -hmm. I said, I'm going to go through the motions of the day, and at night I was going to take my yogurt and put all my medication in it and take my life. Sure Just enough. so happens I had a psychiatric appointment that day that I went to because uh -huh. I was going through the motions, and she said, you're not listening to me. You're not paying attention to a thing I have to say because I didn't need it. I was going to kill myself that night. Uh -huh. So she said to me, you need to go back to the hospital. Uh -huh. I said, it didn't help me, the hospital, because they didn't know about it then. Uh -huh. And she's not, it, it would help now, but then they didn't know about it. So she said to me, let's try you on an MAO inhibitor. So I said, well, I'll give it two more weeks. I gave it a year already. Uh -huh. So I took the MAO inhibitor, and in a week, I was giving Kevin a bath, and I didn't have a scary thought. Uh -huh. And they started to lessen, and in another week, I didn't have a scary thought at all. Uh -huh. So the depression lifted, because uh -huh. that's what was making me depressed. I, I, I don't, well, you could tell better that. I don't know. I, I wasn't having the thoughts. Uh -huh. And I thought to myself, wow. So I was planning his first birthday party, and I was like, I could do what all the other mothers were doing. Uh -huh. okay. It was like so, so great. Okay. So, and, and I guess it's individualized, because there may be some uh, women who have a great response to medication. Mm -hmm. There, there may be some women who uh, do well with certain types of therapy, uh, mm -hmm. psychotherapy or cognitive oh, behavior therapy, too. right? Oh, that definitely yeah. was a part. And, uh, you know, then there were some women who really need a combination of uh, both, or, both. E or even other treatments as right, well. Right. So I, I remember wanting, I'm a kindergarten teacher, I, I love uh, kids, I've been working right. for 40 years, still dance, still am. I wanted another baby, so I and someone would say, "You're crazy. You want another baby after what you?" Want? I did. I uh -huh. wanted four, and uh -huh. I went to the psychiatrist, and she said, "Go for it." Uh -huh. So you want another baby, you go for it. Uh -huh. And I, I, I got pregnant right away. And the longer I was off the medication, the depression deepened. And uh -huh. when I was about nine months pregnant, I had shock therapy treatments right. because back then, and I don't know about now, back then you couldn't give the medications that I needed while I was pregnant. Right. And I was having scary thoughts about hurting my toddler any minute. So people say, well, isn't a second postpartum easier because you know what you're going through? Right. And it wasn't because at, at any minute I thought I was going to hurt my three-year-old. Right. So does that make, I, it was just as devastating, just as awful. And uh -huh. then when Chris was born, they put me right back on my medication and I, was, uh -huh. I could be a mother. Uh -huh. I didn't have to go through that postpartum yeah. period. So, I mean, you brought up a couple of really important points. You know, one is the whole issue of risks versus benefits mm -hmm. uh, during pregnancy and the uh, postpartum period in terms of whether you stay on medicines or come off medicines. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then the idea that um, there are different treatments as well. So in right. addition to medication, there may be mm -hmm. 
uh, ECT that you right. mentioned, that's an right. effective treatment for mm -hmm. tough to treat depression. Or nowadays, there's a transcranial magnetic stimulation, so mm -hmm. there are different types of uh, treatments that may be helpful. So one question, all of these issues involve uh, individual decisions and I guess a partnership between the mothers and the family and the doctor in terms mm -hmm. of what type of treatments are uh, needed, what are the potential benefits of the treatment, the potential risks of treatment, both for the mother and for the, for the baby as well. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then you, you raise the issue of uh, having additional children, so mm -hmm. the risks and benefits of having uh, right. a larger family as well. Mm -hmm. Have some uh, thoughts about well, all of those issues? I, I, for the past 10 years, uh -huh. since my husband was the governor, I've been going to visit postpartum support groups of moms uh -huh. and hospitals, and they have the, the support group. And um, almost every mom there, I, ha I have to say, had scary thoughts uh -huh. about hurting their babies. And they, were, and they all were like me. They want, not all, but most wanted more children. Right. So it doesn't really make sense because you're going through this suffering but almost everybody there wanted more children. Right. It's like it's I don't know this 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 yearning for children is is innate in me. Uh -huh. I mean, uh, it's but it's an interesting question. You know, the, the uh, uh, childbirth can be a life-threatening situation. Right, right. All kinds of things can go wrong, and yet, you know, one of the the best things about being a woman is you can be a mother, right? You right, can right. Bring life into the world. Right. And, yeah. And it's <laughs> and like I I often think through this dark dark time in my uh -huh. life. I got my greatest gifts. Right. I have uh -huh. my two sons. So through such pain, uh -huh. I got such joy. Uh huh. Right. And and I don't. If the psychiatrist really sat down with me and, and explained, she just said go for it. Uh huh. So I did. Right. But I mean, she uh -huh. should have sat me down and said. Uh huh. There's a chance you could go through this again, but they just didn't know right. that back then. Uh -huh. I spoke at Harvard twice uh -huh. to the new OBGYNs coming up, uh -huh. and they were fascinated by it. They said they didn't touch on it in medical school, uh -huh. they didn't know very little about it, and I told them my thoughts and what I did and how I uh -huh. copied a mother that was a good mother. I did everything she did so that I could be a good mother because I uh -huh. couldn't do it. And they, were, they said they would change their practice. Uh -huh. on the way they treat women that have depression, totally. Uh -huh. Because of my speech. Now, I'm not uh -huh. patting myself on the back, but medical people just don't know too much about postpartum. Right. Well, you're a trailblazer. Yeah, and I guess in so. that, you've, you know, you've been blessed to be able to have a platform right. where you can right. uh, talk about what you've been through. Right. And that's had an impact on uh, others. I mean, mm -hmm. it's had an impact on other mothers. and. Mm -hmm. It's had an impact on uh, clinicians, people who take care of mothers right, as well. Right, right. We yeah. need more clinicians. <laughs> well, we have a lot of clinicians. So uh, one, of the, one of the challenges I think that clinicians have is, well, so how do they deal with these sort of uh, treatment guidelines or recommendations, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so if an uh, if expert panel, for example, suggests that there should be more screening, mm -hmm. then uh, how do you change uh, practice? Uh, if somebody has a, a busy OBGYN practice, for example, or a primary care practice, and they're, they're working with pregnant women and they uh, do some screenings, and I see that there were recommendations, for example, of using simple screening questionnaires like the PHQ, the Public Health Questionnaire, which mm -hmm. is a simple screener that women really can fill out on their own right. or a uh, person within the practice can give to the mom to do a uh, screening. So then one of the questions is, well, um, how do you refer patients or how do you treat patients if you, uh, if you pick know. up the depression, right? Right. So that's, that's something, the hardest part for yeah, me. right. That's, that's the hard, you mean like people say, isn't it hard to talk about having thoughts about hurting your baby? Right. That's, that's not hard for me. I knew I had to do that. Right. The hard part is finding where to go. Right. Where, where are the clinicians? Where are uh -huh. they? That's uh -huh. what you have to handle. Right. Well, I, you certainly have uh, organizations like the uh, American Psychiatric Association, mm -hmm. so people could go on a website to mm -hmm. the uh, oh, American Psychiatric Association and they may be able to give you oh, a referral, good. for example, 
to a, a psychiatrist that has uh, expertise in treating postpartum depression and has uh, access to medication or therapies that might be available. Oh, and then there are other uh, organizations like uh, there's uh, the Anxiety and Depression Association of America, the ADAA, mm -hmm. which is a, a patient-run organization that actually has referrals for clinicians uh, you know, mm -hmm. around the country mm -hmm. who have expertise with depression and or anxiety problems, for example. Oh, that's good. So that might be a good uh, source as you well. You have to write those all down <laughs> for me. Yeah. I need them okay. after we refer people. And so resources are important, and I think that uh, it's helpful when clinicians have those resources because then they can be more comfortable screening because right. and it's easier for them to refer. Right. You know, one issue that does come up frequently is the use of medication during pregnancy, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's a risk versus benefit issue. Uh, there, there, there are potential uh, risks to the offspring, for example, of women who take medicine, but as you mentioned, you know, women who are taken off of medicine who get uh, pregnant, there are also risks that they may have a, a worsening of their depression and then that may be a very difficult situation as well, right? right? So somehow you have to balance those issues. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. mm -hmm. You have to take the time to think about all that. Right. Because people just think, oh, babies, so that's a natural thing. Uh -huh. It's a natural way of life, nothing can go wrong, it's natural. Right. But, I mean, it does happen uh -huh. a lot. Well, you know, it's encouraging to me to hear that even though you've had some really difficult struggles with postpartum depression um, and with these sort of horrific and intrusive kind of thoughts or images, that, you know, having given uh, birth to healthy, uh, wonderful, beautiful babies and uh, mm -hmm. having a family like that is something that's, uh, you know, really that important. That I'll never take yeah. for granted. Yeah. I right. will never ha take so having my kids you wouldn't for, trade it in. for anything uh, in the world. Uh huh. Mm -mm. Okay. So and it, so you've been pretty courageous in kind of uh, talking about your own situation and getting the message out about uh, depression or postpartum depression, um, and that has reduced stigma, I think, for mm -hmm. for women and. It's made it easier for women to have conversations with their doctors about these issues and with their family right. members. Um, what are some of the things that you think haven't really changed over the last uh, 30 years where we would need to really kind of uh, direct our resources or how, how can we continue to have a, a big impact? What are some of the unmet need that still exists? Besides the treatment of yeah. women with their fa and their families? Um, well, I think a lot more I went to one doctor with my um, son just for, um, I forget what he was at the doctor's for, but I noticed there were leaflets in, uh -huh. in the offices if you have postpartum depression. Right. I mean, just doing something simple like that. Like, go, right. if you go to your pediatrician's office, if they have pamphlets, you don't want to discuss it with your doctor, don't. But there's a pamphlet right here right. with a number on it that you can call to get help. I mean, just even little things like that. Right. I mean, putting pamphlets in any kind of doctor's right. office so you don't have to say uh -huh. it. Because a lot of people don't want to say that they have to, they feel guilty and bad. Right, and so, so. yeah, having those, those kind of uh, reading materials or materials that could Just, be in a waiting area. Yeah, of any yeah. kind of doctor. Uh -huh. It doesn't have to be like a psychologist right. or a psychiatrist. So it's, it sounds like uh, information is important, mm -hmm. having some of these simple screening kind of questionnaires that might mm -hmm. be in a, mm -hmm. in a waiting area or that are a receptionist or a doctor mm -hmm. or a nurse can hand out. Mm -hmm. uh, can be helpful and that may raise an alert and lead to a referral mm -hmm. and then having a list of other resources and referral uh, referral resources could be very helpful mm -hmm. as well. And I think the hospitals, um, well they let me know now they're a lot uh -huh. better than right. they were when I was there. Um, they have support groups for new moms uh -huh. and their families. They don't just put you in some kind of group right. for the hell of it to fill your day up but that's what they did with me. Right. Um, so, I so I guess uh, there's there's a need for even um, more effective treatments with mm -hmm. fewer side effects, right? Mm -hmm. That may be uh, better studied during pregnancy, right? Mm -hmm. So you get a better sense of risks and benefits for both moms and babies. Mm -hmm. Also, sounds like a within a medical practice, we have a lot of specialization, right? So mm -hmm. uh, pediatricians may say, well, you know, we deal with babies, but we don't deal with the mothers, right? Right. And here they well, are. Yeah. My pediatrician right. was giving me a prescription for eye drops for my infant. Uh -huh. 
uh -huh. and I'm thinking about putting my baby in the microwave. And he doesn't uh -huh. know this. Right. But I mean, they do deal with mothers because they're uh -huh. giving us the prescriptions for our babies. Right. They're like half seeing it. Uh -huh. Because we are important in the care of our babies. Uh -huh. and I don't think you can break a human being down into such parts that sometimes right. physicians do. Right. We're a whole person. Yeah. Well, it, it does seem that one major uh, emphasis these days is in to try to develop sort of systems that work a little bit more efficiently yeah. and to try to uh, cover people, right? But also to. Uh, drive down overall health care costs. So right. it sounds like, uh, you know, if depression is a big problem, that's associated with a lot of disability. And right. postpartum depression wreaks havoc on uh, families. Mm -hmm. Well, then it, it makes sense to me that there should be money invested in these right. kind of uh, right. problems so that there can be efficient screening and then good Referral care. resources, right? right? Mm -hmm. And it sounds like the more information that we have about different treatments that are available right. during pregnancy and the risks and benefits for the mothers and the babies, the better as well, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Okay. Anything else that you'd really like to uh, get across to a broader audience that we haven't touched on yet? No, I think that, I think that about does it. My dream is that these women will have a place to go to, for someone to support them. That's uh -huh. my dream. I really wish that, uh -huh. that, that everybody low cost or, or no money at all, or some place where women can go. Uh -huh. When people come to me on a kindergarten teacher, I can teach them to read. Uh -huh. I, can't ther I can't give them therapy. I'm not a therapist. I, could, I know how they feel and right. I can like relate, but I right. wish that there were some place you know, where the, their moms could go. Uh -huh. That's my dream. Right. Well, it does sound to me like you've been helpful in uh, educating the public mm -hmm. and you've been a, a good role model because you've talked about your own personal experiences and mm -hmm. people can look at you and say, well, I, well, I did it. I did it, though. I got yeah. through it. And I became right. a mom. Yep. So I had my babies and I, and I raised them so you can't right. get over it. I right. didn't think I could back then. Right. But it but also sounds like you've had an impact and that you and your husband, Richard Cody, mm -hmm. when he was governor of New Jersey, uh, instituted a screening in New Jersey that's sort mm -hmm. of a, a role model for uh, other states as right. well. Right. I've been invited yeah. all over the country to uh -huh. speak right. and I've never asked any state can I go there. Uh -huh. They've always asked me right. and, and the audiences were always like a mixture of healthcare professionals and non uh -huh. and they were all very, I was very well received. Uh -huh. So I, I think I did my share now and I think I'm done. Like I like I'm kind of uh -huh. hoping that I'm done. Okay. I really like teaching and I like working full time, but I feel like I, I threw the ball in and right. now it's up for the younger people. Okay. To well, take them. you know, I know that you're a teacher and I know that you uh, that you really like being with kids and teaching. I love it. And then when you're with the kids, um, nothing bothers you, right? Mm -mm. <laughs> Only if they can't read. <laughs> that bothers me a lot. Okay. But yeah, I love it. It's, I'm not. I don't want to be a psychiatrist or a therapist, but I right. did. I did teach. Right. I taught them about postpartum uh -huh. people. So right. Okay. It wasn't. It wasn't something I didn't you know like doing. But now I'm done. I think. Okay. I hope. Okay. Well, it's been a pleasure to talk with you here today. Thank you uh, for inviting me. Okay. Well, it's always great. And just again, you know, my name is Dr. Eric Hollander, and I'm here at the Spectrum Neuroscience uh, Research Foundation. And I'm here with Mary Jo Cody, who is a teacher, uh, but also served as the first lady in New Jersey when her husband, Richard Cody, was governor of New Jersey mm -hmm. and has been an important uh, advocate relating to issues around postpartum depression. And it's particularly timely now with these uh, new guidelines. So thanks Thank for coming in. Thank you. Yeah.